15. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in a three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and professional firefighters of Hampton IAFF Local 2664, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2000, um, 2017, 93,968. That's over 39 weeks. Uh, 2018, 131,669. That's over 52 weeks and over the 2017 level. 2019, 126,173. That's over the 2018 level. And 2020, 30,587 for 13 weeks over the 2019 level. And further to raise and appropriate the sum of 93968 to fund the cost items related to the professional firefighters local 2664 salaries and benefits for 2017. Such sum represents additional salaries and benefits over the 2016 budget level for the first of the three years that are contained in a collective bargaining agreement between the town by its Board of Selectmen and Professional Firefighters of Hampton, Local 2664, pursuant to the Collective Bargaining Statute, which is RSA 273A. The compounded cumulative cost over the three-year contract years of the agreement is estimated to be $762,451, majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0. Recommended by the Budget Committee, 8-4. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2017 tax impact is 2.8 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Is there a motion to open discussion of Article 15? Moved by Mr. Bean. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Barnes. Mr. Bean, would you like to speak to Article 15? I would yield to uh, <coughs> Assistant Town Manager, Mr. Sullivan, please, sir. Thank you. Uh, Jamie Sullivan, you have the podium. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Again, I'm Jamie Sullivan, the Assistant Town Manager of our town, and uh, I was a member of the Negotiating Committee on behalf of the Board uh, to work on all of the contracts that you'll see before you in these four articles. Uh, I'd be happy to answer questions as they come up, but as a general overview, uh, we spent a significant period of time, Mr. Bean, Mr. Geralt, and myself representing the town, negotiating with the four unions whose contracts uh, were up this year. This contract for Unit 2664, um, all of the tentative agreements and the costing items are on the website for folks if you want to go look specifically at them. But in general, uh, what we were able to negotiate uh, in, in, on behalf of the board was a three-year contract with uh, pay raises of 333 over those three years and a number of different uh, uh, health care uh, concessions. With 2664, the, the unit's going to be paying uh, more on their health care contribution rates uh, over the three years, uh, approximately one and a half percent more for all members of the union. Um, there are some additional medical steps, an increase of uh, rescue swimmer program, something that we see uh, quite a bit. Um, there was an additional incentive in place for that. Um, there are also concessions with regard to moving to a new prescription plan, which will save both uh, the town and the employees money. Uh, overall, we felt this was a very fair contract, um, and the board has supported unanimously. I'd be happy to answer any questions the folks may have. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Jed Carpentier. I'm here on behalf of the professional firefighters of Hampton to uh, speak in favor of this contract. I wanted to first uh, thank the negotiating committee um, helping us arrive to this final conclusion. Um, and thank you to the board as you sit up there who unanimously supported this contract. I think that goes uh, speaks volumes to the direction that we're going in our department and this town is headed as well. So thank you for that. Um, I think both sides sat down and collaboratively worked toward accomplishing a final product that, in my opinion, delicately found the balance between value for the taxpayers and the firefighters. Um, Mr. Uh, Sullivan spoke briefly to that and gave an overview of that. Um, and I can answer any specific questions that anybody may have um, afterwards or now if that should arise. Um, but we are always on call here for the, the town of Hampton and we're proud to do that whenever the circumstance may arise. Um, I know when we are called to your homes, it's not always at a time uh, when you planned on having an inter interaction with us. But above and beyond uh, what we do on duty, our members are actively involved in the community with various different products that we do, our uh, programs that we run. Some of them are our FAST program where we're over at Center School on a consistent basis interacting with the second graders and setting an example and showing them 
uh, how to be positive role models in the community. We also interact with the senior citizens of, senior citizens of this town on a consistent basis with our uh, bingo program and strawberry festival that we do on an annual basis. We have a program where we provide coats for um, children in need in the community where we do Operation Warm, um, provide multiple coats for any kids that may have that need. We also have a program with our toy bank where I'm proud to announce that this year we were able to provide a warm Christmas for 177 children within the community, affecting 58 families. Um, and that's something that our members all volunteer their time in the community um, and are proud to do. We're actively involved with the Color Guard and many other um, programs within the community. Uh, I rise to ask the, the public to support Article 16, uh, or excuse me, Article 15 for your firefighters, Article 16 for your fire officers, and also Article 17 and 18 for the rest of your public employees. I think, speaking from the heart, this provides long-term security for your workers here in town and sets the tone for these departments to go into the future. Um, we could sit here and negotiate what percentage would be more reasonable, but I think that that's frivolous at this point. Um, we're proud to serve the town of Hampton. We're proud to be involved in the town of Hampton, and we hope that you can be proud to vote yes on Articles 15, 16, 17, and 18. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carpentier. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Which one? Not the other one. Not the other one. He's had his, uh, he's had his turn. You're up. Thank you. William Sullivan again, 12 Colonial Circle. Um, having had the opportunity to serve in several different communities, I think I'm a pretty good judge of the competency and the dedication of town employees in general. And the town of Hampton is very fortunate, very fortunate to have some of the best in all the departments. Um, these con and I'm speaking in generality now of the four, of the four articles. Um, they were negotiated in good faith by both sides, and I hope that the um, townspeople will join me at town election in March in voting for these contracts. They deserve it. Uh, they work very hard for the community, and uh, I hope that all these articles pass. And I'm going to be leaving, so I'm going to leave you with one additional note. When you get to Article 25, it's a good deal for the town. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan. Chief Ayer. Mr. Moderator, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I rise today to uh, endorse the, the contracts on behalf of Local 2664-3017. Uh, this is an exceptionally professional group of individuals that come to you uh, when called. We hope that you never need our services, but in, in, uh, in essence, when you do, you're getting the best professionals that can possibly provide. Uh, routinely, we, we have the opportunity to hear, um, oh, your fire department came to our house this week and it was just a tremendous effort. Uh, nicest people, they helped us out so much, thank you very much. Um, they provide so much on duty and off duty as well. Uh, as Jed pointed out, during their, their time off duty, they're, they're volunteering constantly, whether it's with the Strawberry Festival or the children on uh, the center school projects that they're working on, field day. Um, hit the beach. They're they're sending time out, spending time out on the beach with our veterans. It's just a tremendous organization. They they love this community and they show that. And I ask that you support their contracts as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Edgar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, my name is Mike Edgar. I live at Seven Anne's Terrace. I just wanted to uh, come up and uh, support these collective bargaining agreements. Um, Three-year agreements uh, give you some certainty, stability, and that's what we need. Um, on Article 15, I think I'd want to stress the term professional firefighters. That's what they are, the extensive training they get. It's very intense, and uh, I think that we really want to make an effort to, to retain the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgar. Mr. Pierce. Mike Pierce, uh, 84 Lock Road. Uh, I have no problem with having union contracts. I just think that these are a little generous because if you take all these contracts and you take the three years that they're 
uh, we're obligated to uh, agree to. It's going to cost us nearly two million dollars, okay, over that time period. So when we're squabbling about five hundred thousand for the budget this year, you're going to get an automatic increase of nearly somewhere between six and seven hundred thousand every year for the next three years, and like it or not, okay. So I think that. I like contracts. I like my father was a big union person. I have nothing wrong with the unions and the firefighters, the police, and all the rest of our employees do a wonderful job. There's no de debate about that. I'm just concerned about the people who can't really take too many $400 increases in their tax bills over the next few years or more, okay, because that's the way we're headed with this ballot if we go down this path. So keep that in mind. Your taxes will definitely take a nice chop up. So I'm not against the contracts in general. I'm just saying they're too generous, considering the fact that the cost of living is staying almost flat. I'm on Social Security and on the, uh, a retirement plan, and my increase is not anything at all. It's zero. So I think we have to keep that in mind that some of us in this town are not getting all this generous increase that some other people are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Bryan. Yes, Russ Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. I think Mr. Pierce brings up a good point, and so I'd like to uh, expand on that a little bit. In the past 10 years, from 2005 to no, 11 years, 2016, the CPI, the average, was 2.13. Social Security in that 10 years, the average was 2.25. For those of us that are on retirement, like myself, with the New Hampshire retirement system, our average increase was 0.71, not even 1% over 10 years. The collective bargaining agreements for local 2664 over that same period, that point is 0 0.58. So when you talk about year in, year out, we have to look at that. If you look at the national standards for the HR uh, directors and, and, and people, they're looking at right now that the average raise is 3%, and they're looking at that over the next three years. When we negotiated these contracts, I was not on the negotiating team, but we had a good team doing it. And I look back, and I look at the town reports, and I believe it was 06 or 05, the last time we had four contracts negotiated. And for that, that those two years that it actually took to do it, we spent about $240,000 in outside legal fees to have an outside lawyer come in and do that. Um, can you add, tell me how much does this cost out for outside legal fees for these contracts and all four contracts? Zero. So right there, we've already had a savings right there. So when you think about that, don't look at just the one year. Let's look back a little bit and see what's going on. I'd ask that you support these contracts. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Kravitz? Senator Kravitz, A. St. C. Drive. I support these contracts. They were negotiated in, in good faith. My concern is the, Ham, the New Hampshire Retirement Fund. State doesn't contribute any, anything anymore. There's a time bomb down the road where Hampton's going to have to pick up the shortfall. The state projects, when they plan, they project a return of 7%. They're not earning anything close to 7%. What my suggestion is, going forward after these three years, for new hires, I set up an IRA, make a generous IRA, freeze the, the defined benefit plan in place for the existing employees, and let them switch into an IRA going forward after these three years. Otherwise, the taxes there's a time bomb down the road that's going to really impact all the communities. Thank you, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, Mr. Griffin. Yes. I would like to say that I'm um, very much in favor of all of the uh, employees' uh, packages that we're coming up with the next uh, Warren articles. And while I do feel that we have to uh, consider that people are retired and people do have limited um, incomes in retirement years. 
The thing is, these people that work for the town are at their peak earning um, ability. And they, it has to be considered as they're in their careers and they need to be paid what they're due. As far as the fire service is concerned, I think my favorite part of it always is the ambulance service. This is so important to everybody. We need the best people we can get, and we have to attract the best talent we can get for both the fire and the ambulance service. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Representative Emmer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, to the point of contributions from the state for retirement, I can tell you that the wind blowing in Concord right now is to reinstate that at some level. I don't know that it'll be at the same level that everybody wants, but I think it's going to be reinstated at some level. Uh, but I would also support the contracts, having been a user of the services, uh, and I support all the contracts. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Emory. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 15? Seeing none, Article 15 will appear on the ballot as printed.